like, we worked it out. It's, everything is fine. Um, and, uh, and I'm actually glad to know him. This story is uh, called William fucking Shatner. <laughs> I first met William Shatner on the set of Star Trek V in 1988. I was 16. I had been working on TNG for two years at the time. We were enjoying some success with our show, and I was very proud of the work that I was doing. When I found out that the original series cast would be working next door to us for two months, I was beside myself. Roddenberry was still heavily involved in the production of Next Generation back then, and he and I were very good friends. When I would pass by his office door, it was not uncommon for him to throw an executive out and invite me in for a visit. He knew that I was a fan of the original series. He knew that I was more than a little intimidated by these actors. He offered many times to make an introduction, but I always declined. If I was going to meet these legends of science fiction, I was going to do it on my own. For weeks, I tried to get up the nerve to introduce myself. When I would walk from the stage to my dressing room or to my school room, I always did it slowly, looking at their stage door, hoping to catch a glimpse of Mr. Spock or Dr. McCoy or maybe even the legendary Captain Kirk. The few times they did appear, though, I could never find the courage to approach them. This went on for six weeks. Each night I ask the stars above, why must I be a teenager in love? Word got around our set that I was too checking to introduce myself to the original series cast, and it became something of a joke. The crew began to give me some good-natured ribbing about my reluctance. Next Generation was immensely popular at the time, and I was still riding high on the success of Stand By Me, which, by the way, was 25 years ago, which is weird, because I'm not that old. <laughs> the cast and crew of Next Generation couldn't understand why I was so intimidated by these actors. My face was splashed across the cover of every teen magazine in print, from Teen Beat to Awkward Nerd Quarterly. <laughs> Trekkie with a chance to meet the original cast of Star Trek. Why was I intimidated? I'm gonna let you do the math. <laughs> One afternoon while I was sitting outside stage nine talking with Mandy, my costumer, they opened the huge stage door across the way and I could see right into the set of Star Trek V. It was a large area, sort of like a cargo bay, and it was filled with extras and equipment. It was different from our set, but it was unmistakably the Enterprise. Standing in the middle of it all was William Shatner. <laughs> he held a script like it was a holy book. The way he gestured with his hands, I could tell that he was setting up a shot and discussing it with the crew. I waited for that familiar rush of nerves, but it didn't come. Seeing him there as a director and not Captain Kirk, well, put me at ease. It was my moment. If I didn't walk over and introduce myself right then, it was never going to happen. I was wearing the gray acting ensign spacesuit, unzipped with the sleeves tied around my waist. <laughs> that costume was really uncomfortable, and I hated it. So I would take the top half off whenever I got the chance, because it was a jumpsuit. I would tie the sleeves around my waist, and then I would wear this lightweight fleece jacket with the obligatory Will Wheaton is 16 Batman pin. <laughs> Zipped up to cover the embarrassing muscle suit the producers made me wear underneath my stomach <laughs> station. No, no, I'll wait for you. 
you to finish laughing at my pain. Go ahead. Which is the name of our Smiths cover band. It's gonna be such a great second act. We all wore the muscle suits, guys. Even Michael Dorn. But I think I was the most traumatized by it. I have always been a slight little nerd without a lot of muscle mass. And having to wear all of that padding did little to improve my fragile teenage self-esteem. I turned to Mandy and I took off my fleece. I asked her to zip up my spacesuit and fasten the collar. Oh, Mandy, you came and you zipped up my space. If I was going to go over there and meet William Shatner, then I was going to do a Starfleet regulation. She made sure my costume was camera ready. And she wished me good luck. I got a high five from one of the Teamsters as I confidently strode across the street and walked into the cargo bay of the Enterprise 1701A. It took eight steps for my confidence to evaporate. <laughs> Surrounded by extras in Starfleet dress, standing next to a shuttlecraft, William Shatner, the director, was immediately transformed into Captain Kirk intergalactic legend. I was transformed from Will Wheaton, fellow actor and film industry professional, to Will Wheaton, drooling fanboy and Trekkie. I looked around. I guess I blended in well because nobody had noticed me. I turned to make my escape, and I walked right into a still photographer who had worked on Next Generation in our first season. Hey, Will, what are you doing here? He asked. <clears throat> I swallowed and looked past him at the stage door, tantalizingly close. <laughs> oh, um. Jumped in and saved me. Bill, this is Will Wheaton. He's part of 
part of the cast of The Next Generation, and uh, he came over here to meet you. Why? What happened? 
happened? I told her as I fought back tears and recounted our introduction. What an asshole! Oh, I'm so sorry! I nodded my head and she gave me a hug. I drew a deep breath, shrugged my shoulders, and I walked back to my trailer where I sat down and cried. I had spent weeks getting up the courage to meet this man, and in less than five minutes he had insulted and humiliated me. He had reduced me from peer to peon. I wore my stupid costume that I hated, thinking that it would impress him, and he actually made fun of it. Fifteen minutes later, an assistant director knocked on my door and told me that they were ready for me on the set. I stood up, wiped off my face, and walked into the stage. I took my seat on the bridge of the Enterprise D next to Brent Spiner. So I heard about Shatner, Brent said. <laughs> Yeah, I said. You know he wears a toupee, right? <laughs> I giggled. No, um, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, he's balder than old Baldy up there. <laughs> I giggled some more as the stored up adrenaline released itself. Wow, that's pretty bald. <laughs> yep. Brent put his hands up on his console. The first AD said, this will be picture. We all focused. The camera rolled, the director called action. Patrick entered from his ready room and walked to the captain's chair. Mr. Crusher, take us out of orbit and lay in a course for the Ramata system, warp six, he said. I, sir, my fingers danced over the con. Of course, lay in, sir. I think it's so, Mr. Crusher. The camera creaked back on the dolly track as the Enterprise D went to warp speed. Contract, and I don't know why they did that. <laughs> All right, great cut, new deal, the director said. Wrong set, we're moving to the observation lounge for scene 55, said the first AD. The actors have 10 minutes. On my way back to my dressing room, the DGA trainee stopped me. Uh, Will, Gene Roddenberry would like you to call his office. What? <laughs> you gotta return the call, man. Okay. I changed direction and I walked to the stage phone. My heart began to beat hard again in my chest. Oh my God, Gene had known William fucking Shatner for over 20 years. <laughs> Did Gene know? If Gene knew that I'd upset William fucking Shatner, maybe Gene would be upset at me too. This is the worst day ever. I passed the craft service. No! <laughs> service table set up behind the star field that hung in front of 10 forward. Michael Dorn and Jonathan Frakes were pouring cups of coffee. To hell with him, W! <laughs> Do you want me to kick his ass? <laughs> Michael Gordon didn't actually talk like Worf when he wasn't being Worf, but in my imagination he does. And since I'm telling the story, Worf it up, Dorn. <laughs> office and told his secretary that I was returning Gene's call. Oh, he's expecting your call. Just a second, Will. There were two clicks, and Gene's gentle, friendly voice was in my ear. Hi, Will. How are you? Um, um, I'm okay, I guess. How are you? 
I'm fine, I'm fine. Listen, Will, I understand you had some words with Bill Shepard today. <laughs> Without Gene's intervention, that note would never 